Esther Phillips, Barbados's poet laureate, grew up in the shadow of Drax Hall, one of the oldest slave plantations in the Caribbean. Over the centuries, thousands toiled and died, producing the sugar that made its British owners fabulously rich. What makes Drax Hall so unique is that unlike most plantations here in Barbados, which have changed hands since the slave trade was abolished, it's still owned and run by the same family. The house and lands are now being passed on to the latest Drax in line, Richard Drax, the MP for South Dorset. This is an instruction manual of how to uh, manage a plantation. And it's from 1786. And one of the authors in this is Edward Drax. And in here, you see the attitude towards enslaved people. The blacks are commonly addicted to thieving. If it be for their belly, it's more excusable. But I hope none of mine will ever have occasion to be thieves for want. But if at any time they are taken, stealing sugar, molasses or rum, they must be severely handled. An estate whose contents and history are closed to the people of Barbados. We can't get any closer because it's private. And some people say that's a really big problem. They think it should be open to the public so people can see and hear and feel the history within these walls. Sunbury House Plantation, like many on the island, is open to the public and stands as a monument to history. It's just so odd looking up and seeing all of the people who would have been the Queen's representative from the 17th century. And they were white, and they were white men. And then it's only in 1966 when you have the first person of African descent. Now Barbados is taking the final step in leaving behind its colonial past. They're getting ready to become a republic removing the Queen as the head of state. This is also a moment of reflection for the country, with questions being asked about the impact slavery still has today.